Christ is risen, Christ is truly risen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sisters and brothers, in John chapter 20, verses 11 onwards, we have this fascinating story of Mary Magdalene at the tomb. She stood there weeping at the empty tomb. She saw the two angels and Jesus standing there, but did not recognize him. They have a small conversation, but still Mary does not recognize Jesus. Then Jesus calls out to her, Mary, and Mary instantly recognized Jesus and responds by saying, Rabboni, meaning teacher and master. And she went and told the disciples, I have seen the Lord. Mary had seen the risen Lord. She was the herald of the resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus reminds us that Jesus is alive. I remember how the simple lyrics of the hymn, God's not dead, he's alive, made a lasting impression on me as a young man. The verses went on like this. I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. I can feel him in the church. I can feel him in the street. I can feel him all over me. Later on, we would sing the same hymn by substituting the word feel with C. I can see him in my hands. I can see him in my feet. I can see him in the church. I can see him in the streets. I can see him all over me. Now, I not only feel him, nor do I only see him, but I truly believe that he is alive. I have experienced his love, his touch, and the power of his resurrection. And I believe with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength that he is risen. He is alive. Christ is truly risen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you still have doubts lurking in your minds, recall the words of Jesus to Thomas when he appeared to the apostles the second time after the resurrection. Thomas, believe. The resurrection of Jesus Christ was the beginning of Christianity. If Christ had not been resurrected and seen by more than 500 people, Christianity would not exist today. Jesus made 12 appearances after his resurrection. The first the appearance was to Mary Magdalene on that early Sunday morning, as told by Mark chapter 16 and John chapter 20. Secondly, Jesus appeared to the women returning from the tomb, Matthew chapter 28. Next, we know that Jesus appeared to two disciples on the road to Emmaus, as mentioned in Luke chapter 24, as well as in Mark chapter 16. He appeared to Peter in Jerusalem, Luke chapter 24. He appeared to his disciples and other followers in locked room in Jerusalem. The apostle Thomas wasn't there at that time. A week later, Jesus again appeared to his disciples behind locked doors, and this time Thomas was present. John chapter 20, verses 24 to 29. Jesus also appeared to seven of his disciples on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. John chapter 21. Jesus was seen by 500 believers at one time in the 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 6. He appeared to James according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 7. He appeared to 11 disciples on the mountain in Galilee, Matthew chapter 28. He walked with his disciples along the road to Bethany on the Mount of Olives and then ascended into heaven. Luke chapter 24, verses 50 to 53. He was seen by Paul on the road to Damascus, Acts 9, 3 to 6, and 1 Corinthians 15, verse 8. How Christianity often ends with Good Friday. 
We are overwhelmed by his death on the cross. We feel sorry for him. That's the end of our faith. We go back to our old lifestyles and live as if we have never known Jesus and his resurrection mean nothing to us. What, according to you, is Apostle Peter's worst sin? Some people believe that his triple denial of Jesus was his worst sin. For me, Peter's worst sin was his statement as recorded in John 21 verse 3, wherein he says, I am going fishing. Peter acted as if he had never met Jesus. He went back to his old lifestyle, to business as usual. He went back to a life before Christ, to a Christless existence. Celebrate and witness the risen Christ this Easter season. Remember, we are an Easter people and hallelujah is our song. Jesus reprimanded the 11 apostles for failing to believe in his resurrection. In the first instance, in Mark chapter 16, verse 14, Jesus chastised the apostles for their disbelief, for their lack of faith, and for their stubbornness, because they did not believe those who saw him after he had risen. Mark 16, verse 10 and 11, after Jesus' resurrection, Mary Magdalene went to announce the good news to his followers, yet they refused to believe it. Later on, as two of them were walking along the way into the country, he appeared to them. Yet, when they announced the good news of Jesus and his resurrection, the apostles did not believe them. Jesus, in his mercy, did not want his apostles to miss out another time on his resurrection. So as they were at table, Jesus appeared to the eleven. He upbraided them for their lack of faith and stubbornness. Mark 16 verse 14. John chapter 20 tells us that when the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Thomas was not present when Jesus appeared. A week later, Jesus appeared again and Thomas was present. John chapter 20 verse 27. Jesus tells Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Is Jesus still on the cross? Or is he risen? What is my answer? What is your answer? There is a beautiful hymn, I Serve a Reason Savior, that was composed in 1933 by Alfred Henry Ackley. The composer gives a simple and profound answer to why he believes in the resurrection. He says, because Christ lives today, he walks with him and talks with him, and he lives within his heart. The lyrics of that hymn go like this. I serve a reason savior. He is in the world today. I know he is living whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he is always near. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my heart. 
What a beautiful hymn. When Jesus appeared to Mary, she was transformed from a crying, broken-hearted, crestfallen, and dejected woman into a joyful witness to the risen Lord. She was the herald of the resurrection who told the apostles about the resurrection. St. Augustine called her an apostle to the apostles. Thomas also had doubts about the resurrection of Jesus. Let us see that story again. We know that Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks on his hands and I put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. We know Thomas as a disciple who doubted. He wanted proof. And when he touched, he believed in the risen Lord. In the two appearances of Jesus, we see how Thomas, in these five steps, transformed from a doubting man to a man of the resurrection. He came, he heard, he doubted, he touched, and he believed in the risen Lord. Let me tell you the story of the English journalist Frank Morrison. The strangeness of the resurrection had captured his attention. And influenced by skeptic thinkers at the turn of the century, he set out to write a short paper proving that the resurrection was only a myth. Frank Morrison's investigations, however, convinced him that the resurrection really happened. The book he wrote about his quest, Who Moved the Mouth Stone, has become a classic since its first publication in 1930. This book, Who Moved the Stone, is still today a well sought after book. The apostles and the early Christians did not whisper he is risen. Bursting with faith, hope, and joy, they passionately and confidently proclaim that Jesus is risen. The first readings from Monday to Saturday within the octave of Easter specifically points out how the apostles fearlessly proclaim the risen Christ. On Easter Monday, in Acts chapter 2, verses 23 and 24, we see Peter standing with the eleven, addressing the crowd, saying, You killed him, but God raised him up. On Easter Tuesday, we read from Acts chapter 2, verses 36 to 41. Here Peter, on the day of Pentecost, spoke to the Jews, saying, God, may Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. On Wednesday, within the octave of Easter, we see in the first reading from Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 10, Peter boldly telling the crippled beggar, I have neither silver nor gold, but I will give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, walk. Here Peter is referring to the power of the risen Lord. On Easter Thursday, the first reading is from Acts chapter 3, verses 11 to 26. Here we have the people running to the portico of Solomon. 
towards Peter and John in great excitement after the healing of the crippled beggar. Peter deflects all attention on them and points out to the risen Christ by saying, you killed the prince of life, but God raised him up. Now on Friday of the Easter octave, we read the story of Peter and John arrested because the priests were highly annoyed because they had healed the crippled beggar and spoke about the resurrection. Acts chapter 4 verses 1 to 12 tells us, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. On Easter Saturday, the first reading is from Acts 4, 13 to 21. This is the account of the boldness of Peter and John and how they had healed the crippled beggar by the power of the risen Lord. The rulers, elders, and scribes warned them not to speak about the risen Christ in order that it may spread no further among the people. But Peter and John answered them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. They had seen the risen Christ. That is a story about a preacher who one Easter day, near the end of his life, when he was unable even to speak, wrote to his daughter, it is terrible to wake up on Easter morning and have no voice with which to shout, he is risen. But it would be still terrible to have a voice and not want to shout. The message of Easter cannot be written in the past tense. It is the message for today and the days to come. Hence we say, he is risen and not he has risen. Sisters and brothers, the Paschal mystery has two aspects according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 654. By his death, Christ liberates us from sin. And secondly, by his resurrection, he opens the way to a new life. What is this new life? It is a life of faith, of love, joy, peace, and hope. Let's talk about the first point, faith. On this Easter day, we are called to make the deepest act of faith by renewing our baptismal promises. Let us again see how Mary and Thomas responded when they saw the risen Lord. When Jesus appeared to Mary, she was transformed from a miserable, desolate and dejected woman into a joyful witness to the risen Lord. Thomas responded with a profound prayer of faith when he saw the risen Lord. He said, my Lord and my God. This is the prayer of a man who had experienced the risen Lord, a prayer of a man of faith. We must pay heed to the admonishment of Thomas by Jesus in John 20, verse 29. Jesus asked Thomas, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. The resurrection calls us to a life of faith. Pope John Paul II would constantly remind the faithful not to abandon ourselves to despair because we are an Easter people and hallelujah is our song. 
he would persistently exhort the people saying, be not afraid because we belong to the resurrection. St. Robert Southwell said, Jesus gave himself to you. Give yourself to Jesus. Let's grow in faith by believing in the resurrection of our Lord. St. Augustine said, faith is to believe what you do not see and the reward of faith is to see what you believe. Sisters and brothers, Mother Angelica, the foundress of EWTN, who died on Easter Sunday three years ago, was a woman of faith. She said, faith is what gets you started. Hope is what keeps you going. Love is what brings you to the end. Mother Angelica also said something that we need to ponder this sister. She said, where most men work for degrees after their names, we work for one before our names. S-T, referring to saint. It's a little more difficult degree to attain. It takes a lifetime and you don't get your diploma until you're dead. The second point is love. The resurrection stirs in us a greater love for God and our brothers and sisters. The greatest commandment that the Lord gave becomes alive with the experience of the resurrection. The Lord said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Luke chapter 10, verse 27. The Paschal candle shines in as much as it is burnt up. It gives light in as much as it gives itself, said Pope Benedict XVI in his homily during the Easter Vigil at a Mass in St. Peter's Basilica in the year 2012. Pope Benedict XVI also said that the Church presents the Paschal candle. This is a light that lives from sacrifice. The light of the Paschal candle is a fire, a force of transformation, he said. Pope Benedict XVI, in his homily, during the Easter Vigil Mass in the year 2012, he said, the darkness enshrouding God and obscuring values is a real threat to our existence and to the world in general. The power of the resurrection calls us to love God and to love our brother and sister. The third is joy. Pope John Paul II would often say, we are not looking for a shallow joy, but rather a joy that comes from faith. Pope Francis, in his Easter message three years ago, said, bear in your families and in your countries the message of joy, hope, and peace, which every year on this day is powerfully renewed. The search is not for a fleeting feeling of satisfaction, but for a perfect, full, and lasting joy, a joy that surpasses all understanding. We are an Easter people, and hallelujah is our song. This is a beautiful summary of a Christian by St. Augustine. Easter is that time when we are meant to explode with true joy. Joy is that most infallible sign that God is alive in you. This is the unmistakable mark that we are an Easter people and hallelujah is our watchword. Sisters and brothers, we are an Easter people. Many people get stuck in the Black Fridays of their lives and unable to move on to being an Easter people. We tend to focus more on our crosses, our difficulties, our problems 
than on being aware of the blessings that God, through Jesus, brings us every day, even through our sufferings and difficulties. Remember, Jesus is risen, he is alive. There is a hymn which says, there are no grumpy faces in this Christian life, and the devil doesn't like it when we laugh, ha ha. The devil does not like it when we are filled with joy. The Easter proclamation exalted reminds us to rejoice heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels, exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Sound the trumpet of salvation. The fourth mark is peace. Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus appeared to the disciples behind locked doors and said to them, Peace be with you. Now in the Beatitudes, Matthew 5 verse 9, the words of the Lord asking us and telling us that blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called the children of God. And the fifth point is hope. Resurrection makes us a people of hope. In the Gospel reading on Easter from Luke chapter 24, we hear that Peter rose and dashed to the tomb. Luke 24 verse 12. He did not remain sedentary. He did not stay at home as the others did. He did not succumb to the somber atmosphere of those days, nor was he overwhelmed by his doubts. He was not consumed by remorse, fear, or the continuous gossip that leads nowhere. He was looking for Jesus, not himself. He preferred the path of encounter and trust. And so he got up, just as he was, and ran towards the tomb from where he would return amazed. This marked the beginning of Peter's resurrection, the resurrection of his heart. Without giving in to sadness or darkness, he made room for hope. He allowed the light of God to enter into his heart without smothering it. Every Easter is a call to rise and see the empty tomb, and to believe in the resurrection. Pope John Paul II was a man of the resurrection. Time magazine had voted him as the man of the year in 1994. The reporter writing about him said, one of the most impressive things about this man is his vigorous optimism rooted in faith. He does not fear the problem and carries on his responsibilities with a clear sense of direction. He kept this vigorous optimism for 27 years of his papacy. Hope, along with faith and love, are theological virtues, and the symbol of hope is an anchor. This is the hope enables us to look beyond the past, the present, and even our tomorrows. Hope helps us to look beyond our present difficulties, sorrows, hardships, sufferings, fears, and irritations. And that's why Padre Pio would say, pray, hope, and don't worry. Hope challenges us to look beyond the now, to the reality of heaven and eternity. Hope is looking forward for tomorrow with faith, love, joy, peace, and with enthusiasm and expectancy. There is a hymn, Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth living 
just because he lives. St. Paul writing in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 1 says, Jesus is our hope. We need to develop a prayer of hope and keep on saying this prayer every time you encounter pain and anguish. I am all right. The reason Lord is with me. Let this prayer be on your lips and say it every time you are down and out. The first post-resurrection saying of Jesus to Mary Magdalene at the empty tomb, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Sisters and brothers, the Lord tells us the same words. Why are we crying? We have to stop crying and grumbling and become a man or a woman of hope. Believe that Christ, my hope, is risen. Sisters and brothers, let us imitate Pope John Paul II, a man of the resurrection. He had a vigorous optimism rooted in faith. He did not fear any problem and carried on his responsibilities with a clear sense of direction. Let us follow in the footsteps of Mary and tell the world, He is risen. Christ indeed is risen. Let us emulate Thomas, who came and heard, heard and doubted, doubted and touched, touched and believed in the risen Christ. Let our constant prayer be the words of St. Paul to Philippians in chapter 3, verse 10 that I may know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Christ is risen. Christ is truly risen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sisters and brothers, we are an Easter people and hallelujah is our song. God bless you.